Attorney Mr. Melnick is um, with us by Zoom right now. Um, you can see him on the video screen and he can see you. If there's any time you want to talk to him privately, let me know that. Um, and I know y'all have had an opportunity since you and I um, spoke this morning from the bench and the stand to talk um, about the fact that the state um, is not interested in you pleading the fifth and in order to avoid you pleading the fifth, they have um, secured an order that says you now can be essentially compelled to testify because we are acknowledging that anything that you say, we cannot prosecute you for a crime other than perjury or false statements based on something that you might say that would otherwise incriminate you if it weren't for this immunity order. Um, and if, if knowing that you still choose not to testify, the court can and will hold you in contempt. And what happens in that event is that you go to jail and the length of time that you could be held in jail for if you don't change your mind and say, okay, I guess I will take the stand is through the end of this trial. I don't know how long it's going to last. I think previous projections had been February or March of next year. I don't know yet, but I guess that's not outside the realm of possibility, but it would only be through the end of this trial. It would not be through the end of whomever else might be severed from this case and tried later. Um, and I know Mr. Melnick's talked to you in more detail about that. So I want to um, see if you have any questions of the court about that. I didn't understand. Now you said it at the beginning. Didn't understand anything. All right. So no, I'm saying like I heard you, but I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So tell me what it is that you'd like more information about. You said, you said something about what they said about immunity? Yeah. What you mean? Okay. Does anybody, I think I've got the order. Mr. Melnick, have you reviewed the immunity order with him? Oh, you're saying it's the same from last time? Hey, hang on a second. Yeah, yeah, the same one as last time. Yeah, yes. that's one. So that's the one I'm talking about. And, and that is still in effect. So you're saying that changed? It has not changed. All right. So what has changed is it's my opinion that I cannot hold you in jail if you refuse to testify beyond the end of this trial. I think you had maybe been told something different earlier, and, and I don't think that is So I ain't got to wait until every defendant is not here. Correct. But you would, if you choose not to testify despite this order, you would potentially be held in jail through the end of this trial, which might be February of next year, might be March of next year. I really don't know. It ends when it ends. And they, the state has a hundred more witnesses and I don't know, any defendant might also have witnesses. So it could take a while, but that would be the end of it would be the end of this trial. Okay. So do you have any other questions? Mm -mm. Okay. And do you want to talk to Mr. Melnick any more about this particular issue? No. All right. So I'm going to ask you right now because I'm planning to have the jury back on Monday. Um, and I am going to tell them um, we, we would essentially start over because I want you to have a voluntary, to an extent, choice <laughs> and knowing choice whether to take the stand and be questioned and cross-examined or not, uh, knowing that if you do, other than if you lie, as Mr. Melnick discussed with you, and it's something the state knows and can prove, they could charge you with perjury or false statements, but they can't, if you say, if, if you incriminate yourself about another kind of crime, they cannot use that to charge you with a crime and they can't say, you know, huh? I have told the state I have lied and lied and I know, lied and lied. I know. And, so and how are they going to be able to question me? I mean, that'll be their problem. That's, that's their case to make or not make. I mean, that's not for you or me to worry about. So they said they're going to be able to charge me if I lie. Like when they, it's up to them to choose uh, when I'm not, not, not prior.
you've said you've lied and lied and lied in every, I don't know what you've said, but let's even say you've said you lied in every statement you ever gave to the police. If you get on the stand and say that again, or, or if you say, all right, this one was the truth, that one they cannot charge you with perjury for, because those are things in the past. What they might be able to charge you with is, I don't know, I mean, give me an example of something that you know he didn't do, and, well, maybe not. Never mind. Don't do Can that. Can I give you an example for what they told me? Yeah, yes. And then I'll see whether that's what I think or not. Yes. So she said it. The only reason she won't lock me up, I just want to know if it's still a plaque. Okay. She said, if I do two things, if I plead a fifth and I say that I killed Donna Batonis. Okay. She said, if I don't say them two, she will not lock me up. All right. What was the first one? Pleading the fifth. Say it again. Taking the fifth, Judge. That's taking it. the fifth. Okay. Right. And you can no longer, so taking the fifth means I might say something that gets me in criminal trouble. I might give you evidence against me that you could then use against me. That's what it means to take the fifth, is say, I am not going to give you evidence to use against me to charge me. When they give you that immunity order, it, immune just basically means we can't do this anymore. It's like if you get an immunization, oh, I'm not going to get the measles now, right, because I'm immune from it, because I got, it's like getting you a shot that says, I can say, I can admit to a crime on the stand, they can't charge me with it. They they have said you no longer have a privilege against self-incrimination because we have committed to not being able to prosecute you, not being able to bring criminal charges against you because of what you say. We cannot take that evidence and use it against you. We can't take that evidence, you know, if you say, well, I, I you, you know, I committed some crime. Here's what I committed it with. I buried it in the yard. They can't go dig it up in the yard and then say, well, we've got this. They can't use any of that. So that's why taking the fifth at this point would get you in trouble, being held in contempt is what we so if they formally don't have they, call it. They fit together. Like they saying something that they don't know what they're talking about, and then they ask me about it. They can, they can ask you about anything they want to. If in your answer you admit to a crime, you admit to a crime, they cannot charge you with that crime. Now, if you admit to a crime and they have evidence that is pretty certain that you did not commit that crime. For instance, somebody gets robbed yesterday. And they have proof that you were in Europe yesterday. There's no way you could have committed that crime. But you say, yeah, I committed that crime yesterday. That was here in Atlanta when they know you were in Europe. And they got video of you in Europe. And you sent a postcard that said, I'm having fun in Europe. That would be proof that you're lying. And so that they could charge you with perjury for, okay, or false statements for. Okay. Okay. So. What I want to know from you is when we have the jury back on Monday and you're still under subpoena, so you're still obligated to come, and I, I'm asking you now, when they're like, all right, we're calling Kenneth Copeland, are you going to say, okay, ask me what you want to ask me, I'll tell you whatever I'm going to tell you, or are you going to say, nope, I don't care if you throw me in jail, I'm not saying a word, I am not getting on the stand. It depends on how I wake up. Okay. All right. Well, then we will just revisit it on Monday morning. So plan to be here at 845 on Monday morning. You're free to go for now.